Alright guys, uh, this will be another ruling uh, segment for uh, the uh, 13 rulings that you should ought to know. Uh, so I'm going to start right away. Uh, I think you guys are very familiar with the series already. So, yes, the, so the first one is a pretty simple one. I'm going to start us off pretty slow. Uh, the first one is uh, when a monster declares an attack uh, and then player B activates uh, Book of Moon on the declaration of attack. Uh, the question is, is uh, the monster that declared an attack able to shift its battle position after declaring an attack? And uh, a lot of people don't know this still, so I'm gonna go over this one. Uh, you cannot uh, flip the sun. You cannot flip the monster over uh, after it gets Book of Moon uh, when it declares an attack. So here's the uh, Book of Moon chart here. Uh, this is the chart that you can find on the Edison format uh, Discord. Uh, so if you go on the Discord and you check the pin messages, uh, you can actually see a uh, a chart that lists out the uh, the what happens when uh, a monster gets flipped face down by Book of Moon. Uh, so declaring attack. Let's see here. So if that monster has declared an attack this turn, uh, it does remember uh, even if it's flipped face down that it was that to declare an attack but the thing about it is uh, how do you guys know if uh, if a monster declares an attack is it able to switch battle position so here we have the uh, Wikipedia page open for battle positions uh, so if you go to battle position it says that if a monster is summoned normal summon or declares an attack even if the attack was negated or canceled due to a replay it cannot manually change its battle position for the rest of the turn so this basically means that uh, it's unable to switch battle position when it declares an attack so just for you guys to know uh, these are the rulings that you should know for Edison for sure. For the, for the next ruling here, we have a set pyramid turtle uh, skill drain uh, that's active in a uh, bottomless trap hole. Uh, what happens if player B uh, special summons a uh, a treeborn frog from the graveyard and tribute summons for a Caius? So the treeborn frog is uh, not necessary. It's just uh, as long as Caius is summoned here. Uh, Caius here is the mandatory effect. So when you summon Caius, you have to declare a target here. Uh, so in uh, as chain link one, Caius will be chain link. Uh, in Chainlink 1, Kai's will be able to target the Pyramid Turtle. Uh, however, Skill Drain is active, so uh, because it's active, uh, if there's no further chain on the resolution, uh, Kai's will be negated uh, by Skill Drain. However, uh, Player A wants to activate Bottomless to get rid of the Kai's. So what happens in this scenario is uh, when Bottomless uh, as Chainlink 2 banishes the Kai's, uh, off the field. Uh, it is no longer face up on the field anymore to be affected by skill drain. So Caius will be able to banish the pyramid turtle uh, that it was able to target on the summon. So uh, skill drain will only affect cards that are face up and because of the chain link order uh, re resolving backwards, bottomless will be able to banish the Caius and Caius will be able to banish the pyramid turtle. Oh uh, yeah, so that'll be the first one. Uh, that'll be the second one. Uh, on to the next one. So the next one is uh, when a uh, player is able to synchro summon and to uh, revive King Hades. So here we have a Goblin Zombie and we're going to top deck a uh, card for play spreader. Uh, then they synchro summon both the monsters to summon into the uh, revive King Hades. Uh, from here the uh, Goblin Zombie searches the Zombie Master but that's not important. Uh, what happens when Revive King Hades, which has the ability to uh, negate the effect of any effect monsters destroyed by battle by a zombie monster? So it itself is a zombie monster, so what happens if it were to uh, declare an attack on a uh, face down um, Treeborn Frog? Uh, during the next standby phase, will Treeborn Frog be able to activate its effect to bring out itself from the graveyard? Uh, the answer to that is no, and the reason why is because uh, Revive King Hades uh, follows the monster that is destroyed by battle. So the reason why is because Revive King Hades uh, is effect to negate the effect of the monster it sends to the graveyard uh, by battle. Uh, it follows it all the way uh, until it gets removed from the graveyard and then placed back in the graveyard somehow. So if somehow you are able to uh, put the Treeborn uh, Frog from to the banished area and then put it back through to uh, using Burial from the different dimension for example, or if you have uh, Battle uh, monster reincarnation and put it back to your hand and discard it from Swap Frog. Uh, it's able to get its effect again. However, as the, as long as it's in the graveyard, but it, as long as it's in the graveyard after it was destroyed by Revive King Hades, uh, it'll stay there and it won't be able to activate its effect to revive itself. Uh, this is also true for other cards such as uh, Plague Spreader Zombie as well. Uh, you can activate its effect to top a card from your hand to the top of the deck, but it won't be able to special summon itself. And this is also the same with Volcanic Shell. Volcanic Shell has its ability to pay 500 life points and add another shell to your hand so uh, that's another one and then the other one uh, very commonly is uh, Vayu so if Revive King Hades destroys uh, Vayu uh, Vayu won't be able to activate its effect to banish itself and then special summon a synchro monster uh, a black wing synchro monster from your graveyard uh, 
so another card that does this, uh, the similarly to this, is a card that's actually coming in, back into the format, but only in a specific deck. It's the Mausoleum Frog deck. Uh, it plays the Ancient uh, Gear Beast card. Uh, so let's pull it up real quick. So Ancient Gear, Be uh, this is the Ancient Gear uh, Beast card. It says negate the effects of an opponent's uh, monster destroyed by battle with this card, including the graveyard. So this is uh, very similar to the Revive King Hades that Zombie plays. So here's another ruling where uh, we have a Garoth face up on the field and a set MST. Player B activates Blaze Accelerator on the field. Uh, Blaze Accelerator doesn't send a Pyro Monster from your hand as a cost. So what it does is that you just target as cost. So what you do with uh, Blaze Accelerator is you would target the monster and right here we target the Garoth here. The question is what happens if MST gets chained to uh, Blaze Accelerator? Uh, and thus destroying it, uh, would the uh, Blaze Accelerator resolve to send a uh, to send the uh, Volcanic Shell to the graveyard to destroy Garoth? Uh, the answer to that is no, because in order to uh, send uh, continuous spell cards, have to uh, be face up on the field uh, to basically um, activate and resolve its effect and destroy the monster. Alternatively, are you able to declare an attack the, the same turn you activate this card and it was MST on the chain? And the answer to that is no. The activation of the card wasn't uh, negated. Uh, Blaze Accelerator will uh, still trigger its ability to uh, prevent you from attacking for the turn. So uh, similarly, there's going to be another ruling on the next segment that's very similar to this as well. So on to the next one. So similarly from the uh, last ruling, uh, what happens if uh, player A has Soul Exchange here? Uh, activates Soul Exchange and targets the Stardust here. And uh, the uh, player B is smart enough to do to be able to dodge uh, something like this. Uh, player B activates something like a MST to target the Soul Exchange, and then the Stardust then is able to negate the MST on the chain to uh, tribute itself off the field and prevent the Soul Exchange from uh, targeting the monster, or not targeting the monster, but from tributing the monster. Uh, would the player uh, A who activates Soul Exchange be able to conduct its uh, conduct their battle phase? And the answer to that is no. Uh, the reason is it's the same as Blaze Accelerator. Because the activation of Soul Exchange was not negated, you will not be able to um, conduct your battle phase because the activation was still legal. Uh, it's just that the adverse effect will still carry on. So just uh, an FYI for you guys. Uh, on to the next one. So this is a funny one that I found across uh, between Lumina and Zombie Master. So uh, let's see what the difference is. Uh, so player A activates uh, Lumina's effect to, uh, on priority to activate its effect to discard a volcanic shell from your hand and special summon the Garoth from the graveyard. And player B chains Book of Moon targeting Lumina. Uh, funny thing enough is that Lumina is able to still special summon the monster without being face up on the field uh, because uh, the Lumina doesn't have to be face up on the field to resolve her effect, uh, basically, even on the old text. But uh, on Zombie Master, uh, if you go on Dueling Book, it says this card has to be must be face up on the field to resolve, activate and resolve its effect. Uh, the old Zombie Master, uh, if you go to have the starter deck Zombie Master, uh, it doesn't have that text uh, at all. Uh, so some of you guys might have the copy of this uh, card where it doesn't have the, f the, the wording um, this card must be face up on the field uh, to activate and resolve this effect um, but uh, even back then they, they acknowledged that zombie master has to be face up on the field uh, to activate and resolve its effect so if cards like bottomless was chained to uh, zombie master's summon because you activate priority to revive the uh, plague spreader zombie uh, if Bottomless gets chained, or even Book of Moon is chained onto the Zombie Master, uh, because it's uh, off the field and no longer face up on the field anymore, uh, it won't be able to activate and resolve its effect. So, uh, this is one of those things where, because Kon Konami said so, uh, even though Zombie Master's old text doesn't have the word activate and resolve its effect, uh, it's just how it is. Lumina is just uh, resolves her effect uh, even if she's not face up on the field anymore. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of funny, and I just thought I'd, I'd point that out. On to the next one. Okay, here's another one. Uh, this is going to be uh, a, a weird one because it's the way that the card was... Uh, so I'll just show you guys. So we have a set uh, Xtaber Arabellum uh, previous, uh, on the previous turn. Player B decides not to do anything. So player uh, A activate or flip summons uh, Arabellum. Normal summons the Rescue Cat, activates the Rescue Cat's effect and brings out two more Arabellums. Uh, from here, uh, player A uh, sends all the Arabellums to the graveyard. 
uh, to Synchro Summon and to uh, x Saber Gotems. So the question is, because of the wording of this card, it says one tuner and one or more Earth monsters, because the uh, Air Bellums, or because x Saber Gotems doesn't specify non-tuners, uh, you're actually able to Synchro Summon all the Air Bellums, uh, even though they're all tuners, and it's very weird because most of the cards, or if not all other Synchro Monsters, require a non-tuner. Because of x Saber Gotems' effect to require only uh, one or more Earth monsters, uh, you can actually just use three tuners to make this guy or two tuners whatever as long as the costs add up to it and you have somewhere in your uh, materials an earth monster I know this card is very weird uh, but it's one of a kind and especially uh, in, uh, in Edison format it's very legal uh, yeah so on to the next one so some of you guys may know this uh, particular ruling because there's a lot of content creators uh, covering the policy documents uh, that was released back in the day so what happens if uh, my crush is activated here and uh, calling blue eyes white dragons uh, and player A uh, does player A have to reveal their hand and discard all copies of uh, blue eyes white dragon from their hand uh, and then in the uh, old uh, Edison ruling uh, policy documents if a player is able to discard at least one copy of it from your hand uh, they don't have to show their hand for, uh, at all to discard the second copy so obviously you can see right here that this would promote a foul play because a player A doesn't have to show their hand for one but B if they do have a second copy of their uh, the uh, blue eyes in their hand uh, they can simply say that they don't have uh, the second copy of the blue eyes and if later on that the game goes and they draw another copy of blue eyes white dragon uh, and then somehow the opponent was able to see that they have the second copy of the blue eyes and then they, they go how come you didn't discard the blue eyes from your hand uh, the player a can simply uh, claim that they just drew it for turn and there was no way to verify whatsoever unless there was a judge uh, in hand or whatever uh, in the case so back in the day I think you were allowed to call a judge over and to verify a player's hand and say hey uh, does this player really not have the second copy of the uh, card that I declared and uh, the judge can say uh, yeah that's true he does not have a second copy of that card in their hand um, so if you're running a tournament in the if you're running a retro format tournament uh, it's often good to say to either go with the old rulings where you were able to just call a judge over to very very much just verify if the mind crush ruling uh, was uh, correct I mean if the uh if the, pl uh, the player A is being honest about the, dis the discarding, or you could just simply say at the start of the tournament, say that uh, the, just to reveal their hand for the uh, modern uh, format uh, anti foul play, where they just simply reveal their hand and discard all copies. But sometimes you want to be strategic about the whole thing, so uh, oftentimes it's just better just to call a judge over for uh, Mind Crush, uh, or uh, another card is Chain Disappearance, to just simply uh, call a judge over and see if uh, the other player is uh, being honest about uh, discarding the second copy or the third copy of their um, declared car of mind crush but yeah that's enough for that uh, we're gonna go on to the next one uh, here's another ruling where we have uh, Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon here, and uh, Red Eyes, the player A activates Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon here. Player B then responds with uh, DD Crow to uh, basically banish the Blue Eyes. Because Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon actually doesn't target, it says here that during your main phase you can spell someone Dragon from your hand or graveyard. Uh, neither this card doesn't specifically target a monster in the graveyard. Uh, because of that, you can actually just special summon a uh, Dragon from your uh, from your hand, or if you have a different Dragon in your graveyard. Uh, such as uh, I don't know any uh, any other dragon, you can actually special summon that dragon instead of the uh, intended target. So if uh, you fully intend to use special summon the blue eyes from the graveyard and it gets DD crowed, if you have another copy of a dragon monster in your graveyard or one in your hand, you can special summon that instead. So just to show you guys, if you do play dragons, uh, that's what red eyes dark to metal dragon do for you. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, so here's another one where Crebon's in the graveyard. Player A activates uh, Telekinetic Power Well. Uh, this one actually doesn't really target, so it just says special summon uh, any number of level 2 or lower second monsters. So because it doesn't target, uh, and if you have another copy of a second monster, uh, and the first target gets DD Crowed by Crebon's, uh, well, the question is, are you able to special summon the other copies? And yes, you could special summon the other copies of Crebon if you have it in the graveyard or any of the second monsters uh, that are level 2 or lower. But are you, are you going to take damage? Uh, it says here uh, you take damage equal to the total levels of those monsters by 300. Uh, so in the Edison format ruling, uh, the monsters have to be special summoned to the graveyard in order to take damage. So since DD Crow was able to banish the Crabons off the graveyard, you will not take 12 or not 1200 life points, but you will not take 600 uh, life points from the Crabons uh, total life uh, total. Um, 
total levels. So uh, yeah, so you won't take any burn damage if uh, you get DD Crowed on the on the stack. Okay, uh, on the next one. Uh, so this one actually came up in tournament yesterday uh, or the day before yesterday for me. Uh, so uh, we have a, um, a set pyramid journal and a cyber dragon. Uh, player A decides to summon the straddles here, uh, attacks the uh, pyramid turtle that's set. Uh, before a uh, damage calculation, they activate rivalry warlords, and the monster attacks the face down monster and uh, flips the pyramid turtle. So the question is, Straddle is able to destroy this card by battle and allowing the pyramid turtle to special summon a uh, another zombie monster. Uh, there's two things wrong with this. Um, one, uh, you cannot actually control a second copy of a different type monster. So since this is special summoning a zombie, uh, pyramid turtle will not be able to special summon another uh, zombie monster uh, but two uh, the rivalry of warlords actually sends the monster on sub step 5 of the damage step so if we go here on the Edison format uh, website continuous like effect and soft destruction apply now so if uh, rivalry of warlords is on the field and uh, cards uh, this this being a continuous effect uh, we'll be able to apply uh, we'll be able to apply on the field so what happens is pyramid turtle will be just sent to the graveyard because of rivalry warlords and uh, because you can only control one type and it will not be destroyed by battle uh, for this reason and then stratos will not be able to special i mean you will not be able to um special summon a zombie monster uh for two different reasons so yeah uh but yeah that's the ruling for this one and uh, on to the next one so this is gonna be my last ruling for to for today uh so, so player uh, b summons the uh, gale of the whirlwind uh and then black garden halves the attack so for the sake of arguments we're gonna pretend that the token's not there uh so gale does about uh 750 or 650 uh life points so what happens with uh, with Trigodi's attack here uh so we have black garden here which says that if a monster is normal summon or special summon face up except by the effect of black garden have its attack then the control of that monster special summons a rose token to their opponent's side of the field in attack position so uh ignoring all that uh, trag will lose half his attack uh, on the summon uh since you have uh five cards in hand and Trigodio will summon it'll go down to 1500 life uh, 1500 attack point so what happens if your uh the gale then further halves the Trigodia uh down to uh 750 uh, and you draw an extra card for turn, uh, is it able to uh, gain the extra power boost from the uh, dropped or halved attacks? And the answer to that is no. Uh, so the attack modulation steps or all the attack modulation rules are really strange in this game, but uh, even if you draw extra cards after um, Trigodia uh, it still is for some reason, uh, it'll still remain at 750 because uh, Gale and uh, a Gale and Black Garden are replacement uh, modifiers, and so it'll just replace the attack as opposed to uh, um, being able to modify. So uh, it is con continuously applying its attack modulation to the, the monster, and so even if Trigodia draws an extra card, uh, it'll stay at 750 uh, or 1500 if Gale was in the, it wasn't there. But yeah, that's an interesting role, and that's going to be all of my segment, and hope you guys enjoyed the segment for this one. Uh, I'll have more in the future, and uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys stay tuned for this one uh stay tuned for the next one uh hopefully you can utilize all this uh, rulings for uh the uh the the upcoming uh nationals double world qualifier uh happening in north carolina uh, so you guys are more prepared for the uh, for that for the event for the swiss uh for the swiss edison tournament that they're gonna have but yeah i hope you guys enjoy the video i'll see you guys next one peace